before Dr. Andrew Huberman's funnel looked like this and probably does so well. This is how I would do it. And this would be Dr. Andrew Huberman's flywheel in kit. It would be pure science. Hey friends, my name is Brad Hussey. I am user number 449 of Kit, formerly known as ConvertKit. And I really love email marketing. I love design and I love automation. Yes, I'm a fellow creator. And so this is something that I do every single day. I thought it would be fun to funnel hack, reverse engineer, see what's in Andrew Huberman's kit, because I believe he actually uses kit. Uh, I, I found that out from the kit website. You can see all of the celebrity creators and high profile names that are using kit. So congrats to the team. I remember when it was just me and a few other folks. Glad that we could pave the way for Dr. Andrew Huberman jokes. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure you guys removed me from the showcase page because I was no longer that interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I have a lot of fun with ConvertKit. I break it a lot. Kit, sorry, still working on it. Old habits die hard, they say. Anyway, I think there was one point I actually may have broke ConvertKit for everybody and temporarily made the system go down. Anyway. I thought it would be fun to see how Dr. Andrew Huberman sets up his kit. He obviously has a giant audience. I'm pretty sure we're looking at about 500,000 subscribers on his uh, email list. So he probably doesn't need my advice on email marketing. That said, if you've got a list like 500K and you're only using it to a fraction of its capacity and you're doing well, just imagine how much better this system will hum along. So we've got science delivered by email joint 800,000. So now it's 800,000. That, that was, that grew fast. Congrats. Anyway, you can enter your email and you will also get his daily blueprint. I like this approach because there's one lead magnet and one kind of entry point. I mean, there's multiple ways to get into it, but you get the same lead magnet, you get the same email list. So you go ahead and subscribe. I got the first email and it's essentially just the confirmation link for the double opt-in. And so I could see it, you know, it's pretty consistent with the site. It's bare bones, plain, that's okay. The design on the Huberman Lab website is actually quite nice. It is very scientific, I guess. It's very clean, good typography. It's got a little bit of play with color and dark. You know, it's quite nice. I actually really like it. And so the email, in my opinion, falls a little flat. It's using a bit of a, of a gray font color here could be a little bit more dark, at least to be matching with the site, possibly even a larger font size. And I think it could play a little bit more with color. And do we need to do double opt-in? No, I don't like double opt-in. I like single opt-in with a new subscriber probation. I'll show you how I do that. I signed up yesterday. I haven't received any other emails from Dr. Andrew Huberman. And so now I forgot who he was pretty much. If he sent me an email, I probably wouldn't remember him. Obviously that's a joke. I would remember him unlike the time he didn't remember me when I, I ran into him by accident at a hotel and we locked eyes and he was getting into the elevator with his probably bodyguard and uh, we locked eyes. He got in the elevator before I did and he went on his way. So anyway, I remember that moment. I don't know where I was going with that. If I were to revamp Dr. Andrew Huberman's kit, I would do it a little like this. It's a good lead magnet. It's sequenced out here in essentially phase one, two, three. This to me makes total sense to turn this into a three-day email series. Send the lead magnet, three-day email series, and we need a lot more magic to be happening here. So with the 800,000 subscribers, great. I'm sure the newsletter is amazing. I haven't received it yet. It seems like it's probably a broadcast newsletter. I also see that he's got a profile on kit. It's very slim, just links. feel like this could be fleshed out a little bit more, but again, it's got 800,000 subscribers. Maybe he doesn't need to do this, but, but it, if you're pulling all the right levers and it's already working well, imagine how much better it will be is is my theory. When I've worked with clients who have big email lists or big traffic and they're not utilizing it to its capacity, when you turn on the right things, it works like gangbusters. So, check this out. I created a little kit here, like a kit toolbox 
that I like to reference when I'm doing this for my clients. So there are multiple ways to opt in. We've got opt-ins like landing pages, inlines, modals, slide-ins, exit intents, recommendations from the creator network, creator profile, any third-party integrations, and then I call them power-ups because that's cool. Lead magnets, that just powers up the opt-in. Uh, form design, if it looks nice, powers up the opt-in. Creator profile design, powers up the opt-in. And if it's single opt-in, in my opinion, powers up the opt-in. Less friction, but we add them to a probation series. I'll show you that. So if I were to show you kind of like what Dr. Andrew Huberman's funnel looked like right now, we got an inline form, a modal, and it's a lead magnet power up, maybe a couple other opt-in locations. And so simple. We probably could capture a few more here by adding creator profile. Uh, I think he's got recommendations, which is good. So if we added some inline forms here that had download the show notes and these AI generated takeaways or resources that down some sort of relevant lead magnet to this podcast episode, that'd be great. But you know, he could make each of these opt-ins on the page specific, even if the wording was specific to the episode and that's easy enough to do. So that would increase the opt-ins. If this is a 10% or 8% conversion rate, that would turn it into something like a 12 or 15 or even 20 in some cases, which I've seen uh, by making it more personalized to the content. That's easy enough to do. That's not hard. So opt-in locations. Next, what does he do? All I get is a lead magnet delivery. This is all I get so far. Nothing yet, nothing else. Probably what also is going to happen is I'm going to get every week. Let's call it a weekly broadcast. So I'm probably going to get another episode. That's great. It's pretty simple. But right there, friends, here is Andrew Huberman's funnel. And what is he offering? What's his pitch? What, like, what is he selling? Premium. Become a member. What's this? Support science and our mission. And how can you do that? a monthly or annual subscription, $10 a month or, or $1,500 one-time payment. This is great. So here's this product. So what am I probably going to get? Weekly broadcast with probably some sort of, let's say like a power up. So that's going to be Andrew Huberman's funnel right there. And Hey, 800,000 subscribers probably does pretty good, but it should be more. This is what I think Andrew Huberman should do. So his email template should be more impressive and it should have a few parts. It should have a dynamic date in the subject line and whatever the broadcast is, he's welcome to send a manual broadcast, but I think it should be a, an evergreen broadcast that sends out his best content. It's a lot of podcast episodes plus a weekly broadcast. It would follow a similar template like this with a dynamic date power up in the top of the heading, the newsletter name, a personalized greeting. So I feel like Dr. Andrew Huberman remembered me when I saw him at the elevator and then a, a dynamic call to action. So this would show a call to action based on if I'm a member or not. Am I annual? Am I monthly? If I'm a monthly, maybe this could be a dynamic call to action telling me to upgrade and I'd save or a special offer. Or if I've paid for that, uh, maybe there's another offer. Or maybe it shows something else, a different call to action. But this is dynamic. It's not static. And then some extra info. And if you want to power up, you can do an ad within an email. You could do sponsored posts, a dynamic sign off. Uh, I like to, instead of just say cheers or best, I have it cycle through a series of different sign offs, uh, links to all the links, and then a big footer logo. Always the big footer logo because that is cool these days. And it should look good in dark mode. So template probably looks something like this. So it's a little more impressive. It show he shows up, he's got a great look and we start off strong with a big hero section, the Huberman lab blueprint, and then the content of the email, a dynamic call to action of some sort like that would check to see if you've purchased this, if you have show something else. And if you've purchased that show offer C and that's built in, that's something that I build into my emails and then a nice kind of sign off with the links and then big logo. Nice and simple. So remember, this was Andrew Huberman's funnel. Let's do something more like this. He's getting all of these different ways of getting opted in. So we're capturing more traffic. Then to use the terminology that Nathan 
congrats, by the way, on the launch of your course, uses flywheels. It's an excellent term. It's a closed loop, essentially. And what we want is this. We want Dr. Andrew Huberman to have less work to do and sales and content and connection to be happening automatically in a closed loop so that, sorry, something in my eye, so that we don't have to remember to send broadcasts manually or his team doesn't. We opt in, it's the same lead magnet, and we change this to single opt-in. No more double opt-in. We want more subscribers, okay? Lead magnet delivery, that's the first email. It's not a confirmation email, it's just an isolated email. Here's your daily blueprint, great. We immediately, as they subscribe, send them over to an automation that I build in ConvertKit, Kit, sorry, that checks, calculates their next offer. Did they make a purchase? If they did, update that so that we don't offer that. Add them to the new subscriber probation, automation, a segmentation glossary. How do we address them? Friend, science people, science guys, fellows, agency owners, freelancers. Like how do we want to address these people? And we could determine that based on where they've subscribed from or what your audience is. I often ask my clients, who are your audience and how do you address them? Let's change it to have a fallback instead of, hey, friends or hey, everyone. It could be like, hey, science enthusiasts. Uh, and then we add them to a quarterly pitch. Okay, so that's an automation, see? And then subscriber probation, it goes, it's an isolated flywheel over there that happens in tandem with everything else. Just make sure you're engaged. If you are engaged, then we'll get you out of there. You're good. If you're not engaged, we'll unsubscribe you automatically over the course of about 90 days. Okay, lead magnet delivery. We check to see, is this a new subscriber? Because maybe I accidentally opted in again. But if it's not a new subscriber, boop, get away from that introduction email. Then drop them in, in this case, Dr. Andrew Huberman's three-day or five-day email course based on his content that's in his daily blueprint. And then we drop them in the pitch next offer sequence. Dr. Andrew Huberman should then have a three to five day automated sequence that pitches the premium membership. That's going to capture one, two, 3% of those subscribers, 800,000 subscribers do the math. Okay. So then that's happening automatically. Did they make a purchase? If yes, then Calculate the next offer. Is it a coaching call? Is it another product? Is it a mastermind? Is it an event? Calculate that. Update the profile. Send them the onboarding emails so that they know how to get the most out of the purchase. Then drop them in the evergreen newsletter, not the manual broadcasts, evergreen newsletter with all your best content. Okay, they didn't purchase? Survey them. Why not? So that we can pivot, update it, maybe offer a discount or find out, oh, they're not a good fit. Let's update their profile or let's update our product and drop them in the evergreen newsletter. Guess what? Doesn't end there. 90 days later, we pitch them the next offer because we calculated the next offer. If they didn't purchase, they're going to get this pitch again or a variation of it 90 days later to try again. And if they did purchase 90 days later, they'll get a different pitch and that's up to you what you want it to be. Dr. Andrew Huberman might have something else to offer. So there is the closed loop, the flywheel, an evergreen newsletter. Once you're in it, this would be Dr. Andrew Huberman's evergreen newsletter where he'd use the template right here. It would have a dynamic call to action in every newsletter piece. It's always a way to purchase. This one goes out on your Friday. You add another email and it goes out on the Friday and you update that with all your evergreen content. But when we subscribe, we get the lead magnet delivery. We get the intro email. We get your five day email course about the daily blueprint. Then we pitch the next offer and then we calculate the next offer based on if they purchased or not, onboard them, send them evergreen content with all of Dr. Andrew Huberman's best content. 90 days later, pitch another offer. And Hey, if he wants to send manual broadcasts, great. Definitely do that. And don't send it on the same day as the evergreen newsletter. And at the bottom of your emails, you have a little special link that says only want the weekly newsletter broadcast or only want a monthly digest. Then you can click it and then you only get one email a week, one email a month, whatever cadence you want to set up all easy enough to do. This is something that I do for all of my clients and I do it for myself as well. Calculating next offers based on what they've purchased, when they've purchased, and it's a very sophisticated system so that your subscriber is in that flywheel and they're never lost 
and they're always getting the right message at, and the right offer at the right time based on who they are, where they came from, your audience, uh, the segment that they're in, and much, much more. So before Dr. Andrew Huberman's funnel looked like this and probably does so well, but if he were to maximize his use and add some power-ups, this is how I would do it. And this would be Dr. Andrew Huberman's closed circuit flywheel in kit using a bunch of power-ups, dynamic content in his emails, and it would be a very sophisticated system. I mean, it would be pure science.